You're listening to the How to Talk to Girls podcast with your dating coach, Trip from tripadvice.com. Do you struggle with getting girls to like you? Well, you're going to learn step-by-step how to talk to girls to create deep connections and meet the woman of your dreams. Here's your host, me, Trip. Hello and welcome to the How to Talk to Girls podcast. This is your host, Trip Kramer from tripadvice.com. And last night, I saw a very interesting movie. Maybe you saw it. It just came out. The movie is called It. It's a remake of the movie called It that they did, I think, in the 90s, a miniseries about a killer clown that terrorizes a town. And this is all based off of a Stephen King novel that he wrote. I'm actually not sure when he wrote it. I don't know if it was the 80s or the 90s, but it's a very, very thick book. It's an epic story. And I wanted to share with you some thoughts I had when I saw that movie that is very relatable to maybe something that you're going through in your life or maybe in your dating life. And it's something that is, again, very relatable. And no, it does not have to do with a fear or a possible run-in to a killer clown who lives in a sewer, which is, again, what the movie is about. And real quick, if you have not checked out my free video called Chick Crack, and this is a video that teaches you basically how to talk to girls. Isn't that convenient? That's what the podcast is called. But it's basically a video that gives you the top and most interesting conversation topics that a woman wants to talk about. And these are things that I have Uh, experience myself. These are things that I know have worked for students in the past, and this has been tested and it works. These are conversation topics that women enjoy. And I want you to have those and I want you to use those when you are talking to girls. It's going to help you with conversation a ton. So get that tripadvice.com slash chick dash crack. Tripadvice.com slash chick dash crack. Check that out and you will get that for free in your email. And then you'll also be on my newsletter, which is pretty cool because I send out, you know, newsletters every week and helping you out and talking about not just my programs, but giving you, you know, free tips and motivational advice and things like that. So again, tripadvice.com slash chick dash crack. Now let's talk about this movie, It, that I saw last night and, and why I was thinking about you, the listener of the How to Talk to Girls podcast. And and maybe you, if you're listening or watching this on YouTube, but basically what this movie is all about really is about the idea of fear. So don't worry, I'm not going to, I'm not going to give away any spoilers, but the whole idea is that this clown terrorizes these kids and he eats them, right? He wants to eat these kids and they actually taste better if they are more scared. Okay. So that's the whole idea is that he tries to scare them and he plays into their fears. So when he terrorizes them, you know, every single one of these kids has a different fear. You know, one girl fears her father, another kid fears disease and germs. Another kid is always freaking out because uh, because of his little brother that got lost. So it really plays into their fears. And so he will shape shift and do what he needs to do because he knows what their fears are. And he'll play into those fears by scaring them and scaring them more so he can eventually kill them and eat them because that's what this what well, that's what this creature does. And I thought it was interesting that really this movie is just one big metaphor for fear because the only way to stop the clown is to not be scared, which of course is a pretty hard thing to do when this clown is, you know, shape shifting into the scariest things possible and freaking you out and knowing that you're always on the verge of death because this thing is extremely more powerful than these children. But again, its only weakness is the fact that if the kid is not scared, then, well, then it's going to be difficult for him to want to either kill them or eat them because that's what he feeds off of. That's where he gets his energy. And it's interesting because I feel like we all have this it inside of us, right? We all have this it inside of our brain, right? This part of our brain that gives us this fear and that sends signals and says, you know what, you should be scared of this. And then of course, what happens is you feed the fear. How do you end up feeding the fear? Well, one way you end up feeding the fear is you actually continue to be scared of the thing 
that you're scared of. So I guess in this case, you might be scared of approaching a woman. You might be scared of asking a girl out. You might be scared to move an interaction forward wherever you are in the interaction. It could be anywhere from you first meeting her all the way to being close to a relationship, right? You might be scared to do that. And what happens when you stay scared? Well, nothing gets solved and then you stay scared, right? If you don't do anything about it, you will stay in fear. If you don't learn how to approach a woman, if you don't overcome this fear, well, the fear is not going to go away and it's only going to get worse. And that's kind of funny because in the movie, it felt like that too, right? These kids were, were scared of this clown and he only terrorized them more and more and he would push the boundaries to scare them more and more and more every time they got more and more scared because that's what he wanted and that's kind of what fear inside of you does right it's it's not very rational the fear that we have or the fears that you might have in fact that might not be rational at all you know i mean the fact that you're scared to go and approach a woman isn't a very rational fear is it no of course it's not it's not it's not rational at all because What's the worst that can happen? Well, nothing. Nothing will happen. You know, you're not going to get arrested unless you do something inappropriate. But of course, here in the How to Talk to Girls podcast, we don't teach you how to do anything inappropriate, right? So you'll use an opener. By the way, if you don't have any openers, go to episode one because there are plenty of openers to use there. But you're going to do it in such a way where if she rejects you or she says no, then she walks away and, and nothing ends up happening. The only thing that you're scared of really is the rejection, is the embarrassment, is failing. You're scared of the failure because deep down inside, you know that if you fail, then you don't have a shot at this. And I know this, and I'm probably speaking to you right now. You're probably like, wow, how is he reading my mind? Well, because I was there once. I know that. I know that this is with anything. Most people are scared to try things because if they fail, then it says to them that they're, they're not going to be able to do it. So it's kind of safer to just stay in this unknown territory of, oh, well, maybe one day I'll be able to meet girls or maybe one day I'll be able to do X, Y, and Z, whatever it is that you're scared to do. You know, it's like, if you don't get rejected, nothing happens. There's always still the possibility in your mind. So you're not really a failure if you haven't tried, right? So that's kind of the irrational mindset. It's like, you're not a failure if you haven't tried, but that's wrong, right? That's wrong. The fact is, is you're sitting there and you're failing if you actually haven't tried. Because the reality is, is that you can become better at anything that you try to do. And I don't say that in some motivational speak in some way and sound and cheesy, like anything you put your mind to, you can do. I mean, I really actually mean that it, you know, everything takes work and, you know, everything is really a skill on some level. You can learn to do anything you want. It's just, you got to put the time in. That's just the trade-off, right? Is that you have to put the time in and do it. And then you'll get better. So you need to have confidence in the fact that eventually you'll get to the place you want to be. It's just going to take a lot of time and a lot of work and a lot of, uh, I air quote this, rejections, you know? I mean, yeah, I guess we can call them rejections because she's rejecting you, but uh, it's hard to say that really a lot because she's not rejecting you ever. She's really rejecting your approach. She doesn't know you, you know? I always say that too. I say that a lot. If you've heard me speak about rejection and fear of rejection, it's like she's, not rejecting you. She doesn't know you. I mean, if you guys sat there and talked for an hour and you dished out everything you could say about yourself, it doesn't matter. She doesn't know you as a person. You don't know someone that well, unless you spend a lot of time with them, talk to them a lot, you know, go on a lot of dates with someone. I mean, really, she's just rejecting the approach. And on and, and top of it, you never know why she's rejecting the approach. Maybe she's got a boyfriend Maybe she's having a bad day and maybe she's kind of scared herself and nervous and doesn't want to be in a position where she has to talk to a stranger and that's okay. Then let her walk away and, and move on. But really the failure comes in not giving it a shot here. So anyways, I guess, you know, back to, you know, this analogy that the movie gives off is, is this idea that there is this fear that lives inside of us. There's something that you're scared of. And that you don't want to do and you're feeding into it the more and more you actually don't go out and try to face the fear and that's what these kids do i'm not again no spoiler alert don't worry if you haven't seen it but i mean it's obvious right the kids go in and try to to defeat this thing and you'll find out what happens in the end but they go and they face their fear and so i'm asking you right now what is the next step for you to go and face your fear what do you need to do do you want to really live with this killer clown it inside of your mind that's taking over? Are you going to let that win? 
Is that something you're going to let actually take you over? Because let me tell you something, whether you believe in God or not, whether you're religious or not, we can all agree here that this is the only life you have. Again, I'm not speaking any religion of the afterlife, but I think we can mostly agree that this is the time that you have in this body as this person, unless I guess maybe you believe in reincarnation. But even with that ideology, that means that you're reincarnating to to a different person. So this is your shot as you and your body right now. You only have so many days left. I don't mean to sound morbid here, but you only have so many days left on this earth, on this planet. So are you going to face your fear or are you going to let it take you over? How many days is it going to take you? How long are you going to wait till you go after what you want? How long is it going to be? I'll say this, you know, right now, there's some fears that I have. I'll be very real with you. There's some fears that I have. You know, I think that one of my fears is that I don't grow trip advice big enough to where I want it to be. You know, if you've been listening to this podcast, I've been putting out podcasts for three years now. You know, it's very rare that people even stick around this long in the in the podcast game because it's a lot of work, a lot of rejection. You know, you don't always build your podcast to where you want it to be. And all the other things I'm doing, YouTube and just selling my program Hooked, which if you haven't heard about, it, you should definitely check out getterhooked.com. Shameless self-promotion right there. But yeah, I mean, I mean, my fear is that I don't grow this to the place I want it to be, but but what am I going to do? Am I going to stop? No, I got to keep on going and, and pushing it out further. You know, I'll, I'll be even even more honest with you. There's some people who have noticed that I took down a lot of content. I actually took down a lot of the heavy sexual content that uh, was getting me a lot of views and a lot of traffic to my pages and my programs. And I took down maybe about 20 to 30 videos because I felt uncomfortable having those up. You know, I mean, I still think some of the information in there was good information, but it's just not something I really wanted to associate with much anymore and just wanted to stick more with the original stuff that I first used in TripAdvice or first, you know, the reason why TripAdvice was born was because it came out of dating advice and, and even relationship advice. And so I want to stick to that, stick to the roots. And, uh, I felt a little bit inauthentic, just talking a lot about sex and it just felt weird to have that all in the channel. So my views on my YouTube channel and building my email list, they got significantly lower because I took those down. So yeah, you know, I live in a little bit of fear, but I don't live in a, in a place of fear that's paralyzing. I know that I'm going to build the YouTube channel back up. I know I'm going to still be able to grow an audience and spread my message to every guy I can. You know, if you don't know what that message is by now, it's about being your authentic self. It's about being you. It's about evolving as a person and growing, but not having to do any weird pickup artist stuff, not having to be some creepy guy, but be in a, the more attractive version of yourself in order to meet women. And I want to spread that message. I want that to be available for every guy that's out there because that's what I wanted. I wanted to be a guy who, you know, was able to meet girls and get a girlfriend and not have to be some weird dude, you know, not have to wear funky hats or or, you know, become some sort of pickup artist where I was saying weird things to girls. It just wasn't my scene. So I had to learn how to do this in a more natural way. And that's the message I want to spread to all of you. And so again, without going too far, far on the tangent here, it's that I really wanted to spread this message while doing it in a clean way and also do it in a way that I truly believed in. And now that I'm back to that, those roots well, sex sells. So sex isn't selling anymore because I took that stuff off and now I'm kind of growing it what feels like from scratch again. But it's okay. You know, again, it's a fear that's small and I know how to handle because I feel that I can do this and it's something that I really want. I want to help you. So that's just me kind of going, getting a little vulnerable there and talking more about what it's like for me and and how, you know, I can relate to you because I know we're all going through this, this fear. Anyways, this is not a promotion for the movie. It, they did not pay me. I like the movie. Go see it. If you're into it, I actually thought the original was scarier, but I think that was probably because I was a kid when I uh, first watched it. But yeah, I mean, it's up to you if you want to go see it, but it was just cool that the movie, you know, I just forgot as a kid that as a kid, when you watch it, you're just freaked out because there's a killer clown, but as an adult, you watch this thing and you realize Stephen King was really talking about this idea of fear itself. And he was able to put it into a creature, personify it in a sense. 
and it made you know makes a really cool story. But the deeper meaning behind it, the one that I'm gathering is that no matter what, if you're not conquering your fear, if you're not trying to overcome your fear, well, then it's going to get worse and eat you alive. Okay, just like it does in the movie, it eats children. So anyway, yeah, go check out the movie if you want, and also if you want to learn more about overcoming fear. This is something not very timeless, I'm about to say. You could be listening to this months or years later, but if you're listening to this in the more real time, I'm doing a special program where every Tuesday at 4 p.m. Pacific time, I get on YouTube and Facebook Live and I'm talking about overcoming fear and tomorrow, well, actually, this is being released on, on Wednesday. I'm recording this a few days earlier. So yesterday, I put out the sixth to last one, there'll be five more, and I'll be going over different pillars of self-esteem and how to overcome fear and uh, going over some really cool stuff. So check that out. If you want, go to facebook.com slash trip advice, press like so you get updates on that. If you want to watch it live from Facebook or go to the YouTube channel and you'll see it come and pop up live at 4 p.m. Pacific on the YouTube channel, youtube.com slash trip advice. So go check those out. I'm really diving into fear and and trying to connect to those themes lately, I feel like at the towards the end of summer and now fall of 2017. So I'm dishing out a lot of information and creating this new program all about fear because I know that this is one of the things that guys struggle with the most. I know that when I do my Facebook Lives and I do Q&A, the number one most common question is, how do I get over the fear of approaching, right? So I talk about that a lot and hopefully I tackle that a little bit for you today in terms of pushing you and motivating you to get to the point where it's going to be easier for you, okay? So again, don't let it, don't let it, the fear, eat you alive from the inside. Go get them.